My collaborative teams collaborate. Welcome. Collaborate Live provides digestible content to both professionals and the public on a variety of topics relating to the collaborative process. Episodes consist of a variety of topics driven by our followers and by our members. Topics range from ethical considerations, best practices, problem solving, marketing, specialized topics related to the implementation of collaborative practice, practice tools, and more. Collaborate Live provides thought-provoking conversation and educational information about the collaborative process and welcome. I wanna introduce, and I'm gonna be speaking with psychotherapist, Carol Hughes. Dr. Carol Hughes is a therapist in clinical practice. Carol has worked with divorcing couples and their children since 1983 and is one of the founding members of Collaborative Divorce Solutions in Orange County, California. Her professional mission statement is to assist as many people as possible heal and empower themselves. And that comes to fruition in the collaborative process. <laughs> Carol is a noted office noted office. She has a noted office and is a noted author um, about a book, um, which she will tell us about briefly in a moment. Carol has extensive training in collaborative divorce and mediation, domestic violence, chemical dependency, and trauma recovery. And for 10 years has served as an associate professor of human services at Saddleback College training prospective counselors. And she is an active member of and a promoter of MCT, and I am delighted to have this conversation with her. Carol, I missed it at the outset, the name of your book and your co-author. Sure. The name of the book is Home Will Never Be the Same Again, A Guide for Adult Children of Gray Divorce, and my co-author is a psychotherapist Bruce Fredenberg, also a California licensed therapist and an active member of MCT, yes. and about which book we've already had a previous collaborate. Mm -hmm. But today, Carol, I, I wanna focus on the role of the child specialist. And I think that one of the um, pieces of the collaborative process that was not in my training, and I've had a few introductory and advanced trainings over the course of time, is the utilization of or the inclusion of the child specialist. And over here on the East Coast, we a few months back had a, a presentation, a seminar on the role of the child specialist, which was an aha moment for uh, our folks in the uh, various East Coast collaborative practice groups. But you've been using child specialists in California for years, I think. And yes. so tell us, first of all, what is a child specialist and how do you get one included or why should you even have one included? Okay. Thanks, Jerry, Jerry, for that great introduction. And those are some good questions. So a child, we, we call in our practice group in Southern California, the child specialist, a neutral child specialist. And I'll say why that is in a minute. Um, so a child specialist is a licensed mental health professional who has training and experience and expertise working with children, minor and adult children, uh, whose parents are going through separation and divorce. And the child specialist brings to the professional team the voice of the children, minor and adult, what might their needs, interests, goals, desires, worries, fears are, how, how they're adjusting to the separation and divorce, what their preferences are. And saying that, I do always educate the parents and the children that the children do have a voice, but not a choice. It's the parents who will be making the decisions about the children. Of course, if they're adult children, they do have a lot of their own autonomy. Um, so that's what the uh, neutral child specialist is. And the reason we have chosen to call the child specialist neutral is to emphasize that the child specialist is neutral to the parents, even though they work with the children. They also work with the parents, giving them feedback and answering questions about developmental issues and, and a lot more. So um, I've now had my second aha moment about child specialists, which you've just brought up. Um, typically, as a trained child psychologist, I think of children being minors. And you're talking about including adult children in the process, in the collaborative process. Um, a, a couple of questions come to mind. How does that go over with the attorneys and the clients? And two, um, 
what's the process of including them? How do you go about inviting them and including them? Mm -hmm. So our original training back in 2003 and 2004 was with a training group that had included uh, the child specialist. The role wasn't very defined or developed back then, but because I work with children as well as adults, I, it was an aha moment for me as well. Why shouldn't we have a representative, an aligned professional working with the children when they are affected by a divorce? A divorce is never a neutral event. We can rarely say never in our field, right, Jerry? But divorce is never a neutral event for children. It's something that happens to children. And so our original training was that the child specialist was a co-equal team professional team member. Mm. Um, in and, addition to the mental health, the neutral mental health professional. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because when you think of a, a family that's going through a divorce, if they're children, of course, then the children are members of that family as well. And we say that collaborative and mediation is our family focused divorce processes. So why would the children be omitted? Mm. Yeah. As opposed to being the object or subject of decisions without their voice being heard. Uh -huh. Exactly. And I knew of mediation research. I think it's been for about 20 years research in mediation. Uh, we don't have it yet in collaborative. Collaborative is a derivative of mediation, of course. And the research in mediation indicates this is very significant research that when their children are involved either in what's called a child-focused process or a child-inclusive process in mediation. And I'll explain the differences later if you want me to. Uh, the, ch the children are better adjusted. The parents are better adjusted during and after separation and divorce. And this is very significant. The agreements that the parents make are more durable. Mm, wow. Th is this happening on the West Coast only? I just sat through... Um, a very extended set of mediation meetings in which there are three children, uh, one of whom has a, a spe special psychiatric needs. And I was included as the child psychologist mm -hmm. as a consultant, having had no contact with any of the children. But I would see that the treatment team for the particular child at issue being involved in the mediation might have facilitated all sorts of agreements mm -hmm. a lot sooner as opposed to the parents and their respective counsel arguing it. Wow, exactly. that's an, another aha moment. Yes, to, thank to... you. <laughs> Excuse me. So child uh, focus mediation is where the mediator or mediator, sometimes we use team mediation, uh, are very aware that the children are, are going to be affected by whatever agreements are made, obviously. And many times attorney mediators don't have that expertise. They don't ever talk with the children or meet them or anything. So it's just child focused is that we're very aware as mediators that um, the children are going to be affected by the agreements. Child inclusive mediation is when there is someone, a child specialist who works with the children, you know, as while the mediator, maybe there's a financial mediator and an attorney mediator are working with the parents. So that one is more similar to what we do in the collaborative process too. Uh, are, are, I don't mean to go too far astray, mm -hmm. but um, in this alternative dispute resolution process that we call mediation and collaborative, it sounds like you're bringing collaborative teams into the mediation or, or um, um, something on that yes. order and and the process doesn't sound much different, except that you've got a mediator as a member of the team in the mediation process. So back to the child specialist, the child specialist is the person treating the children or is the child yeah. specialist a specialist about children who's met with the children and brings their voice if, if they're minors to the table? Yes, that's the latter. Uh, okay. It's a limited scope role. 
just as all the members of a collaborative team are in a limited scope role, uh, we may not be, we shall not be the children's treating therapist. Part of the job of the, of the neutral child specialist is also to assess if the, if the child or children need their own individual therapist going forward. Because you know what parent does not want to think that their child is doing fine uh, for many reasons, love, guilt, <laughs> over the divorce, a lot of other reasons. And so a lot of times parents really truly believe that their children are doing fine. Uh, but a trained mental health child specialist can suss out uh, if they are or they aren't. And because the children know that, the, that their conversation with the child specialist is confidential unless they get permission, that the child specialist gets permission to share, which in my experience, they almost always do. There might be a few things they don't want shared, which is fine. Then they can be completely open about what they're experiencing. As I said earlier, their fears, their hopes, their worries, their preferences. And the child specialist also gets a, a bird's eye view and a very real view of what the parent's parenting skills are. Mm. Because so, so if I may interrupt mm -hmm. for just a moment here, much like the financial professional would meet outside the team meetings to gather yes. information or the attorneys would meet uh, with their clients outside the team meetings in preparation, the child specialist as well arranges time to meet with the children and also a focus on the parent-child dyad or the parent-child relationships. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and also we meet with the parent and each child as well um, to see what that relationship is like after we've, you know, I use questionnaires and, and other interview techniques. Uh, and sometimes the child or children have something that they want to talk with the parent about, positive and or negative, but they don't know how to do it. Even teenagers or sometimes even adult children. I've had 40 year olds want to have a three-way meeting with a parent uh, that they need help, you know, discussing how the divorce is affecting them. A lot of other, um, uh, what shall I say? Well, just how the divorce is affecting them in many, many ways. So, so uh, I'm thinking a sequence of team meetings mm -hmm. where uh, various issues are addressed, whether they be financial, some of which would be uh, child support, um, some of it would be housing, um, some of it would be um, a future education or medical care, all of which uh, revolve around um, the children or the children's interests. But I'm curious, given, uh, again, your training early on two decades ago included the child therapist child specialist, the neutral child specialist, which I, I think, uh, and given your training, was an easy shift in moving into collaborative. Uh, so I have two questions. Uh, one is, how is that role generally accepted when a collaborative team is being put together? Um, is, is it something, for instance, in your collaborative practice group that people routinely request, along with the mental health neutral mental health professionals, or is there blowback for it? Um, and as we know, our language matters as collaborative professionals and what we believe matters. And so the, the lawyers and the financial specialists who have really seen the value and believe the value that the child specialist brings have very little trouble explaining that it to them and explaining what the value is that the child specialist would bring to the children, to the parents, and even the entire collaborative process. Um, so does every single attorney and financial specialist in our practice group use a child specialist? No, uh, I would say probably about half do. Um, and that's the core, it's really honestly the most, the most collaborative and the most experienced and with the most expertise of our collaborative professionals. And so if I may, uh, mm -hmm. because I'm getting some signals for Eric that lunch okay. is gonna be over soon. Okay. Um, it is, um, how does that role differ from the neutral mental health professional who oftentimes is in the role of helping craft a parenting plan uh, or time sharing plan as we call it in South Florida? How, how are those roles different? 
And in the absence of a child specialist, is, is that function that the child specialist done adequately done by a neutral mental health professional? So the roles are different in that the neutral child specialist actually meets with the children and is the only professional on the collaborative team who meets with every family member. So the child specialist has a view of, of everybody. Um, so that's a big difference. Number two, the child specialist gives feedback to the neutral uh, facilitator in your group. Sometimes there are two divorce coaches instead of one facilitator, and we have two divorce coaches sometimes in our practice group. So we give feedback to the, the divorce coach or the facilitator so that they have information, firsthand information, about what's important to include in the co-parenting plan. Do you ever or would you ever include um, the neutral mental health professional along with you in your interviews? so that they get to see what you see? If we assume that the neutral mental health professional's role is to, if you will, facilitate, we call them facilitators here, uh, facilitate the process to kind of keep everybody um, on track and keep emotions from de derailing things. Uh, would you do that or have you done that? Take along a ride along, if you will? Mm -hmm. We have not done that uh, because it's so important that the children, minor and adult, feel like this is their person, so to speak, and, and that we be, are able to develop a relationship with them. Because as I said earlier, divorce happens to kids. It isn't something that they get to choose, minor and adult. Here's another difference, Jerry, that is quite, our people, our professionals feel is very, very powerful. The, the child specialist is in all of the decision-making meetings in our practice group, the ones when we use child specialists. And I mean, these obviously are just pictures. They aren't real children, um, but- Well, they uh, do look cute, okay. Yes, and I have <laughs> adult children to the adult children provide their own pictures. Uh, and so these are sitting in front of me, facing the, the parents during the meetings. And usually I sit between each of the collaborative attorneys so that the parents are consistently reminded that this is a process that is affecting their children and I am the voice of their children and I hold mm. the space in the meeting for the children. And sometimes the neutral financial specialist and I as both quote neutrals co-facilitate the decision-making meetings because all the decisions will affect the children as well. And again, it reinforces the power of the neutral uh, you know, you use a neutral facilitator and a neutral financial specialist, and you know how powerful that neutrality is. And so when we have often two divorce coaches, and so the child specialist and the financial specialist in our model are really the only two neutrals. And mm. so we, we book in sometimes the meetings that way as well. So uh, one last question as we wind down, two questions. One is, I'm sure you'll be back um, to do a presentation that is longer than our lunch meeting. Yes. Um, and so I'll take that as a yes. And yes. the second is, um, is this model applicable to time limited or fixed fee kinds of practice, which seems to be an emerging uh, movement in collaborative to set a number of uh, meetings for a set amount of fees. Is this uh, amenable to that? Yes, um, and we adjust in our practice group too. Uh, you know, we're all, we always assess at the beginning, you know, what is the means, the financial means that, that the parents have. Sometimes uh, they're in a tight situation, like they're going to have to move uh, or something, you know, that where we have to go faster than, than we usually would. So yes, and we have adjusted it to fit. You know, it isn't a rigid model. We use it, we adjust it to, meet the needs of the parents and the children. Well, I think this is the end of our lunch. There is gonna be another a smorgasbord lunch coming up. Um, <laughs> I think that this is a, a webinar worth having. The information has led to a number of aha moments as always. And on behalf of my collaborative team, you are one of my favorite members and guests um, to chat with and at happy hour, the insights that you bring and the wisdom that you bring 
uh, are invaluable. And so I want, for one, want to express my appreciation for that. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Thanks, Jerry. Uh, and by the way, at the IACP conference in October, we're presenting a three hour club, a training on the value of the child specialist. And then we're also doing a 90 minute workshop on uh, the adult children of gray divorce. I saw the, uh, the menu of items, right? Okay, Eric, thank you for hosting us. I think um, you might want to stop the recording. And once you do, Carol and I are going to stay on for just a few moments with sure. you. Everybody, thank you for coming to our Collaborate, collaborate. Um, If you'd like to be a presenter here and or you have some ideas about what we might present in the future, please get a hold of a webmaster at mycollaborativeteam.com. Your input is always welcome. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>